Welcome to part two of working with Maelstrom within Reason. In part one, we took a look at the play controls, the two modulators, oscillators, and in part two, we're going to cover the shaper, the filters, and the spread and volume. If you didn't check out part one, you can find that here. Now I've just got the default patch here loaded. When you first bring Maelstrom into the rack, I'm going to right click and reset the device. And then I want to choose, I'm doing this because I want to be sure that um, we start off from scratch. And so I'm going to turn off these filters here. And for oscillator A, I'm going to choose the synth here. And then for oscillator B, I'll just put some strings there. So first, let's take a look at routing. Uh, this can seem a bit confusing over here, but after you spend some time with this, uh, it begins to make a bit more sense, and hopefully by the end of this video, it will make more sense. First, we have the shaper. Let's take this one. How do we access the shaper? First, we need to turn this on, and for the shaper, the filters, they all have these clickable buttons or LEDs that we can turn them on and off. I'm going to leave the filters off for now so we can just focus on the shaper. Now for oscillator A, if we'd like to send it here, we can just click this button there. And now we're taking advantage of uh, these different parameters. Now if I deactivate that, we can reach the shaper by clicking this other arrow. Both of these correspond to oscillator A, just different methods of routing. So we're still sending oscillator A over to filter B here, but it's not active because the light is off. We can then click this button here and send it to the shaper this way as well. Now, what is the shaper? Um, this allows you to change your sounds by altering the waveform shape, and we can create richer sounds or distorted sound using the shaper. And I'll briefly just talk about what these are, and then we'll listen back and see how they sound. Now the sign is going to give you a smoother sound. Uh, saturate, this gives you a more lush character. The clip uh, is going to give you some digital distortion. Quant is short for quana. I'm just kidding. Uh, quant applies bit reduction. And then noise, we can add noise to our signal. And we can switch by clicking on the name here or using the mode button. And we also have an amount so we can determine the amount of uh, shaping that we're going to apply to our signal. So let's take a listen to some of these uh, using the first method of routing to the shaper. So I'm going to deselect there and click. First let's listen to our sound. We're just on oscillator A. Oscillator B is not active. So our clean signal and now we have the shaper activated, so once we click here, so that's the sign, the saturate, then our clip, which is kind of digital, digital distortion. Quant. A bit of bit reduction here. And then noise. Now if we'd like to apply this effect to oscillator B, I'll go ahead and make that active and deactivate oscillator A. Um, so this is our string sound without any processing. Our shaper is active, but we're not sending oscillator B there because first we need to click this lead here, which will send it to filter B, and this is not active. Then we would click this to send it to the shaper. So before the shaper, then I'll change this back to sign and click this here. Okay. 
Okay, and so this is how we can send each of these oscillators to the shaper and make use of this. For now, I'm going to go ahead and deactivate the shaper. And for the filters, uh, these are two separate filters, and but the controls are basically the same for each one of them. Uh, we've got LP12, which is a 12 dB low pass filter. We've got BP12, which is a 12 dB band pass. And then we have comb plus and minus here. And these are essentially delays with a very short delay time. Um, and if we're going to use the comb filters here, then the resonance knob will control the feedback. The main difference between the plus and the minus here is that the minus causes a bass cut. And so this is going to be the biggest audible difference that we'll have between these two. Now the AM uh, stands for amplitude modulation, and this is also referred to as ring modulation. And if we're using the AM, then our resonance is going to control the mix between the clean and the modulated signal. So I'm going to put this back to the low pass. Now let's take a look at routing for these. Now if we're dealing with oscillator A, I'm going to go ahead and activate this. We can use these filters in a series or parallel, but only for oscillator A. Uh, for B, we can only use these in a series. So to make use of filter A on oscillator A, we need to click this lead here. And we're going to the shaper, but that's not active. And then we need to activate our filter. So I'll deactivate. That's our clean signal. Now let's apply the filter A. And then we, we can go through and take a listen to some of these different parameters. Now see with the, the comb plus we have that low frequency in there. And you'll see it goes away with comb minus. And then we have our amplitude modulation. And again, when we're using the AM, the resonance is going to determine our mix between the clean and the modulated signal. So all the way left, we're just going to have our clean signal. Now in the top corner here, we have ENV for envelope and keyboard. Now with uh, the envelope activated, we're going to make use of the filter envelope above. And if we have keyboard activated, then basically depending on what keys you're pressing on your keyboard, it's going to affect the filter cutoff frequencies. So when it's active, the lower you play on your keyboard, you're going to have less higher frequencies. The higher up you go, the more high frequencies you'll have. So I'll go ahead and move this filter cutoff uh, up a bit. And let's go back to the low pass. So you can hear that when I play a lower pitch or lower key, it's duller. And then the frequencies open up as I play a higher key. And this is going to apply for the keyboard uh, track down here as well. Now when using the filter envelope, this is basically going to determine how our sound is affected over time, how this filter affects our signal coming through over time. So right now we have an immediate attack. If I were to, I'm going to drop the cutoff down a bit. If I were to raise the attack, and we also need to raise the amount uh, if we have this all the way to the left, then the envelope is not going to have any effect on our sound. So as we raise the amount, we can introduce...
So you can see how that's affecting the sound. Now the I and V here is for uh, inverting our envelope. Now if I take that back off. Now what if we'd like to apply filter B to oscillator A as well? Well, we can click this lead down here. And then again, we need to make sure that we activate the filter B by clicking this lead. I'm actually going to turn the filter envelope off so we can make this very clear. Okay, now, um, so this is one way that we can go about this, and we're doing this in parallel right now because we have both this lead and this lead activated. So the signal is being sent through here to filter A, then it's being sent through here to filter B. We can run this in a series, actually. If I deactivate this top lead, and actually we're kind of doing both at the same time there. But if you notice, we are sending oscillator A to filter B and then to A because we have this selected. So if I deactivate that, then we're just using filter B. Now, if I click this, we're using in a series filter B to filter A. Now, I meant to forewarn you guys that I'm, I tend to get lost in these controls when I'm working with the sense and I'm trying to stay on task here but uh, you have to forgive me if I go into this a bit um, so that's oscillator A to our filters now let's go ahead and deactivate that and then I'm gonna deactivate oscillator A and B is already active I meant to have that turn off actually <laughs> So we're not getting any processing because you can see our light is turned off. But filter B is active. I'm going to deactivate A. So let's go ahead and send this through filter B. And then filter A. And we're getting filter A because we have this active. If I turn this off, see there is no difference there. So in order to use filter A, we need to be sure that we have this highlighted when we're using oscillator B.
Whoops, sorry about that. Okay, so you can do some pretty crazy stuff with this. I'll be here for hours if I don't move on here. Um, now let's also keep in mind our play controls over here because we can take advantage of, what have we got here? The uh, filter here. We can use our mod wheel to control what the filter is doing here. So if I go ahead and introduce that a bit you can see now I'm using my mod wheel to uh, control our filter envelope And then also we have this uh, filter envelope here where we can use this style to let the velocity that we're playing our keyboard with control the behavior of our fil filter envelope as well beyond using the mod wheel. Now I'm just going to go ahead and deactivate the filters here. And let's take a look at the spread. This is basically going to kind of determine our stereo spread and if we move to the right we're going to separate our two oscillators so if I turn this uh, Juno back on as I move to the right you can see that or you can hear that these are separated and then to the left we then combine those and one other thing that I forgot to mention in um, part one is that in our oscillator section, we do have these different level controls for both uh, these dis discrete volume controls for both of our oscillators. And it will, it's very clear here if I adjust these while we're panned like this. So when we're working with oscillators, we can control if we feel like one is louder than the other, we can adjust that there. And then of course we have our main volume output. So I think this covers about everything uh, with the interface here on the Maelstrom. And so I hope that you've gotten something useful out of this for creating and shaping your own sounds.